After a long wait, the UIM ABP Aquabike Class Pro World Championship is back on the water for the 2021 season, which kicks off with the Regione Sardinia Grand Prix of Italy in Olbia, Sardinia. Riders and teams and local fans alike welcome the return of the sport to this Mediterranean island and they were in store for a huge aquabike celebration in multiple divisions and categories including Ski Division GP1, 2 and 3, Runabout GP1, 2 and 4, Ski Ladies GP1 and Runabout GP4 Ladies and of course the freestyle as the world's top aquabike talent battled it out in the first aquabike event since Kuwait 2020. In this program, we bring you all the highlights from the runabout and freestyle categories. Olbia is one of the most scenic corners of the Mediterranean island of Sardinia, a beautiful beach town where sun, sand and sea attract people year-round from all over Italy and Europe. Despite the generally arid nature of most of Sardinia, Olbia is set apart by the relative greenery of the city, highlighted by its many parks. With a history spanning millennia, Sardinia offers a cultural and historical richness that is reflected in the varied architecture and buildings of the city, most of which is perfectly preserved in the old city center. Around the San Simplicio Basilica that crowns the heart of Olbia are a multitude of quaint streets and piazzas that offer exquisite dining, shopping, leisure, relaxation and partying opportunities for young and old alike. Outside Olbia there is a wealth of natural beauty and stunning vistas, with beaches, islets, rocky cliffs and distant hills dotting the countryside year-round. It was the perfect setting to launch the 2021 UIM ABP Aquabike Championship season as the island welcomed the long-awaited return of the Aquabike family with a gala event where riders, crews and their families got a taste of true Sardinian hospitality. The waters off Olbia are renowned for being choppy and rough requiring exemplary concentration and physical stamina with a tight and technical circuit that will make it extra demanding. Oh, it's very good. I like it. I always love to be here. It's uh, pretty wavy out there and uh, I love it. Here the water is somewhere is really rough water and some parts is flat. So really it's a good place and uh, we have a lot of public here and the city is very nice, so we are in a good place and I like, I like so much here. The big guns of the UIM ABP Class Pro World Championship are the runabouts. Mean, lean speed machines that hit incredible speeds and boast awesome power in the Blue Ribbon event, the Runabout GP1. Raced over two motos, the Regione Sardegna Grand Prix of Italy featured a fleet of champions past, including two-time consecutive world champion Jeremy Perez of France, who is looking to hit the top spot again after finishing third last year in Kuwait. Finally, on the, on the world championship again, and uh, I feel good. Uh, we have to, we have worked a lot during this period, and uh, we'll see what happens. It will be, will be a good race, and uh, we are happy to race again. The legendary Kuwaiti Yusuf Al Abdul Razak has won more world titles than any other rider, and he is the defending world champion who will be out to start the new season with a bang. Uh, it's the first uh, race of the season, and we're excited uh, to see what it brings. And uh, it's good to be back racing again. All of them are good, uh, you know. With the new model now, the 2021 model, everyone has upgraded, so I don't know what to expect. We'll do our best and. Uh, We'll see and the practice was good. Danish ace Marcus Jorgensen has twice been on the year-end podium, but is still looking for that elusive first world title. Will 2021 be his year? 
back after a six-year absence is Frenchman Francois Midori. The Corsican former world champion would no doubt be taking the fight to the established big names. Yeah, I'm uh, very excited to compete here. Uh, six years ago since uh, my last race, so I try to do my best uh, for this race. Also in the mix was 2011 world champion Mattia Fracasso of Italy, his countryman veteran Lorenzo Benaglia, a former European and Italian champion, the up-and-coming Samuel Johansson of Sweden, Lino Arajo of Portugal, Ali Alanjawi of the UAE, and Andrei Wisniewski of Poland. Moto 1 of the Runabout GP1, problems for Yusuf al Abdurazak who headed out and then straight back in, the Kuwaiti and his team trying to fix the issue ahead of Moto 1. The Kuwaiti team hustles and the problem is fixed in time for the race as the riders head out for the parade lap. al Abdurazak is in pole position after the time trials, surprise P2 for Rasmus Koch Hansen, Jorgensen P3 and then Perez out in P4. The rolling start to Moto 1 and the race is on. The field of 16 riders hurtling down that starting straightaway through the three different start gates on their way to the green hole shots. Al Abdul Razak with the inside pole position advantage. The Kuwaiti is neck and neck with Marcus Jorgensen as they fight for the early lead, but Al Abdul Razak has the advantage and just manages to hold off the Dane. But Al Abdul Razak goes off course. He almost misses that buoy. Has to break hard starboard to make it, and that gives Marcus Jorgensen the lead. The first parallel split course of Moto One. Jorgensen in the green track. Al Abdul Razak in the blue. But Jorgensen is fast and tight. He holds off the Kuwaiti challenge as they come out and pass the separating sausage buoy. After dropping back at the start, Rasmus Koch Hansen manages to climb back and challenge Jeremy Perez. The Danish rider passes Perez by on his right. Drama up in the lead as Al Abdul Razak fights back and races hard through the parallel course in the blue track. And he does it! Al Abdul Razak comes out ahead of Jorgensen as the Kuwaiti reclaims the lead in Moto 1. In the first lap after the starting lap, Jeremy Perez in the green track locks horns with young Samuel Johansson, but the Swedish rider is too fast. Perez bumped down by Johansson as they come out of the split course. Al Abdul Razak leads the race after an eventful starting lap. Jorgensen second, Hansen third, Samuel Johansson fourth, Jeremy Perez fifth, and then Mattia Fracasso sixth. Back in the parallel course, another slalom showdown with Jorgensen in the blue track and Al Abdul Razak in the green. Can Jorgensen take the lead back yet again? This is going to be close. Both racers pushing their skis to the max. But Al Abdul Razak comes out in the end with lead intact. Jorgensen continuing the chase. Hansen holding on to third, using his second place time trial finish to full effect. Then the talented and very promising Samuel Johansson in fourth. Rasmus Koch Hansen has an accident and the Dane finds himself in the water. Bad luck for him as he calls for help and the race goes under a yellow flag as they try to get him off the course. As Hansen goes for a swim, he is passed by first Samuel Johansen who moves up into third and then Perez into fourth. Hansen towed off as they fish out pieces of his ski and his race is over. Francois Midori racing solidly and steadily in his first UIM ABP race since 2015. Midori locking horns with Mattia Fracasso, the man who beat him in literally the last race of 2011 and snatched the world title from Midori. The French rider holds Fracasso off for now, but the Italian is racing hard to catch Midori. Out in the lead, it's still Al Abdul Razak, but Jorgensen is closing that gap rapidly, zeroing in on the Kuwaiti with Samuel Johansson in third trying to catch the lead riders. Last year's world champion fighting off last year's world runner-up Jorgensen as they resume their rivalry here in Olbia in the first race of 2021. In fourth position is two-time consecutive world champion Jeremy Perez. In fifth position behind Perez is Portuguese rider Lino Arajo. Back in the parallel course, can Jorgensen do it? The Dane takes the blue track, the Kuwaiti is in the green as they lock horns yet again. This is going to be very close, and Jorgensen does it. The race lead changes hands yet again as Jorgensen takes charge, bumping Al Abdul Razak down to second again. 
al Abdul Razak's woes are compounded by a missed buoy, which means he has to take the black penalty buoy, and that extends Jorgensen's lead even further. Jorgensen leads, Al Abdul Razak second, Samuel Johansson third, Jeremy Perez fourth, and Lino Araujo fifth as the laps count down. Samuel Johansson misses a buoy and has to go for the black buoy, but he holds point in third. And that will do it. What a race for Jorgensen. A dramatic back and forth between him and his friend and rival, Al Abdul Razak, all race long. But the Dane prevails in the end. A well deserved win. Al Abdul Razak, runner up, Samuel Johansson third, and Jeremy Perez fourth, ahead of Lino Araujo fifth, and Alejandro Molina sixth. Fracasso beating Midori for seventh. The 25 points go to Jorgensen, who will start Moto2 in pole position and be the man to beat. Yeah, I feel good. I had a good feeling since uh, since first practice here. I like this course. I always love to be in Olbia in the choppy water. When the motor starts, the water will be choppy and I know I could do a good job. I made a really good start and then uh, I just tried to follow Yusuf. I see he made a few mistakes and uh, he got tired and when my time was there, I, I, I kicked in and I did it. One of the most popular categories of the UIM ABP Aquabike World Championship is undoubtedly the freestyle, a thrilling, gravity-defying display of aquabatic insanity that somehow transforms a high-octane racing machine that is a jet ski into an instrument of elegance and beauty. The foremost artist of the discipline is without a doubt Rashid Al Mullah of the United Arab Emirates, a masterful rider who has won multiple world championships and countless Grand Prix. He is once again the favorite to take the title this season. Pitting their skills against the Emirati Maestro will be a very experienced field led by veteran Roberto Mariani of Italy, along with his countryman Alberto Camarlengo and Portuguese rider Paulo Nunes. Freestyle will be contested over two motos. Portuguese rider Polo Nunes was first out in both motos, greeting fans who had lined the shore in Olbia for the freestyle spectacle. Nunes put on a lively display, gaining extra points for quantity of tricks and non-stop action. First of the Italian riders out was Alberto Camerlengo, who produced a flurry of 360, 180, and backflip combos as he wowed the crowds with a high energy and dynamic routine. Then it was Camarlengo's compatriot Roberto Mariani, a veteran European and Italian champion and a world runner-up. He was on fire as he took the freestyle to another level with a staggering series of inventive and creative tricks, some of his own signature moves and an excellent combination of both variety and quantity that left the local crowds in awe as Mariani reaped the applause. The last man out was multiple and defending world champion Rashid Al Mullah of the UAE. The Emirati maestro has won every moto and every Grand Prix he has entered in the last few years. And he was once again on fire in Olbia with an incredible mix of pure raw power from an exceptional ski and elegance, grace and creativity as he went from one trick to another with flow and ease in a cascading combo of 180s, 270s, 360s, backflips, barrel rolls, and some things never seen before, earning him 94 points out of 100, of which variety and style were foremost as he backflipped his way to the spectators to greet them close up.
The Regione Sardegna Grand Prix of Italy title went to Rashid Al Mullah, who towered over both motos with near perfect performances. To the delight of the locals, both second and third place went to Italians. The runner up in both motos and in the overall standings was Roberto Mariani, and his compatriot Alberto Camarlengo took the third step of the podium. I'm, I'm so happy. I'm so happy to win this round also and uh, present our country and we make an amazing show today. Alongside the runabout GP1 action was also the runabout GP2, GP4 and GP4 ladies events, which saw some high drama and excellent racing. In the runabout GP2, Kuwaiti rider Rashid Al Dawas produced a commanding performance to win the first of three motos ahead of Estonian Matias Seaman and Spaniard Alejandro Molina. But then Seaman produced a sensational performance to win both Moto2 and Moto3 to take the GP2 title ahead of Molina, overall runner-up, and Aldawas overall third. In the runabout GP4, Matias Seaman was again a dominating factor, taking the checkered flag in Moto1 ahead of two Spaniards, Juan Carlos Martin Palau and Alejandro Prats Palau. Juan Carlos Martin struck back with a Moto2 win, but Seaman was too strong in Moto3, edging out the two Spaniards for the GP4 title to add to his GP2 crown. In the runabout, GP4 ladies was a field of 12 riders, with French rider Clara Mouchemblay in perfect form as she edged out Spaniard Cristina Garcia Lazaraga for the Moto1 win. And then she went on to produce a clean triple moto sweep as Mouchemblay took the runabout ladies GP4 Grand Prix title, with Cristina Garcia runner-up and Polish rider Anna Yashimek third. Moto2 was on, Yusuf Al Abdurazak was ready to race. Uh, we feel good. We found the problem finally. It was an electric and uh, we did a couple of tests and it went uh, really good. So we have a good feeling. We just have to be smart in the race and uh, be in front of Marcus to get the win. The Kuwaiti was three points behind Moto1 winner Jorgensen and Jeremy Perez had realistic expectations from Moto2. Oh, I, I try to to get a good start, and uh, we we'll try to to stay uh, to stay uh, with the trio in front because I think uh, we'll be very fast in front. But uh, I hope to make a podium this weekend. Win will be not easy, but uh, we we'll try to do a podium and we'll be fine. But... race parade lap, it was time for the rolling start. Jorgensen in pole position, there they go! Al Abdurazak in P2 flies out into the lead on the all-important starting straightaway drag race to the green hole shots, but Marcus Jorgensen is right there beside him. The Kuwaiti rounds the hole shots first into the circuit, behind him Jorgensen breathing down Al Abdurazak's neck. But the five-time and defending world champion cuts through that buoy, he will have to take the black penalty buoy. That could give Jorgensen the chance he needs to take the lead behind the Dane or Jeremy Perez in third and Matia Fracasso in fourth position. In the parallel split course, Al Abdul Razak enters the green track with Jorgensen in the blue, taking the Kuwaiti on in the slalom showdown. The Dane is super fast, turns super tight, and Jorgensen has it. He beats Al Abdul Razak in the parallel course to take the lead in the starting lap of Moto2. Last year's world runner-up gets the upper hand on the defending world champion. With Al Abdul Razak taking the black penalty buoy, Jorgensen opens the lead yet further as the Kuwaiti then tries to catch the Dane. At the end of the starting lap, it's Jorgensen in control, then Al Abdul Razak second, Perez third, Fracasso fourth, Lino Araujo fifth, Wisniewski sixth, and Francois Midori seventh. Back in the parallel course, Jorgensen is just flying out there. A brilliant technical display. He looks unstoppable. 
but the Dane has come second enough times to Al Abdul Razak and Jeremy Perez to know that he can never let his guard down or back off at this level. Jorgensen riding like a machine, maintaining that gap over Al Abdul Razak in second, who continues to give chase in his opening bid for a record sixth world title. Portuguese rider Lino Arajo is out of the race, which moves Polish former world number three Andrzej Wisniewski up into fifth behind Matija Fracasso and then 2012 world champion Midori in sixth, followed by Samuel Johansson on the number four ski in seventh and Danish rider Rasmus Koch Hansen eighth. A slalom duel is underway between Wisniewski and Midori, the Polish rider edging out the Frenchman to hold point in fifth. But Midori is right there on Wisniewski's tail, getting hard chase in his first UIM ADP Grand Prix since 2015. Midori's tenacity pays off on lap five as we watch from Samuel Johansson's helmet cam. Midori overhauls Wisniewski, showing us the brilliance that earned him a world title in 2012. Midori moves up into fifth, Wisniewski bumped down to sixth. Now Midori has Mattia Fracasso ahead of him in fourth, the man who snatched the world title from Midori in the very last race of 2011. Meanwhile, great racing from Hansen, who overhauls Alejandro Molina and then takes on and passes Johan Johansson to move the Dane up into seventh position. Yusuf Al Abdul Razak chasing Jorgensen for the lead, but the Kuwaiti has a problem. Al Abdul Razak is out! And sure enough, Jeremy Perez goes whistling my by, picture, the Frenchman picture. moving up into second place. Al Abdul Razak's hope for a Grand Prix win is dashed as he's towed off the circuit. Jorgensen now has an all but unassailable lead out ahead, with Perez far behind and a lot of water to cross before he could get within striking range of the Dane. Further back, Polish rider Wisniewski's woes continue as he's first passed by young Swede Samuel Johansson and then by Rasmus Koch Hansen. Samuel Johansson finds himself in fourth with Hansen right behind him in the top five. Out in the lead, head and shoulders over the field is Marcus Jorgensen, and with just three laps left to go in the race, he looks well nigh unstoppable. But he knows all too well that he still has to bring that ski home if he's to claim the Grand Prix of Italy title. And then the unthinkable happens. Marcus Jorgensen comes to a dead stop. It's never over till it's over when it comes to motorsports. A cruel blow to the Dane, who again sees his hopes dashed by technical issues. Electric issue. It was sad. I was riding good. No one had a chance out there at all. Jamie Perez is not complaining. The Frenchman suddenly finds himself in the lead, not just in Moto2, but in the overall standings after the zero-point exits of Al Abdul Razak and Jorgensen. In second behind Perez is Francois Midori with Samuel Johansson third. After his third place finish and 20 points in Moto1, Samuel Johansson could actually win the Grand Prix title were he to catch up with Perez. But as it stood, Perez was heading to victory even if Johansson beat Midori for second in Moto2. And Perez wards off any of the misfortune that befell his rivals as he manages to bring his ski in safe and claim the Regione Sardegna Grand Prix of Italy title here in Olbia. He knows he has it, he doesn't want to push hard, he's just trying to steer the boat home to the checkered flag for a surprise come from behind victory. The Moto2 results, Perez, Midori, Johansson, then Rasmus Koch Hansen finishing fourth, followed by Samuel's father, Johan Johansson fifth, and Lorenzo Benaglia is the top Italian in sixth after Fracasso's breakdown in lap four. In the overall Grand Prix results, Perez racks up 43 points for the win. Great result for Samuel Johansson, who is Grand Prix runner-up on 40 points, with Midori making a podium return to the UIM ADP Series in third. Dino Arajo and Lorenzo Benaglia in the top five, Wisniewski sixth, and Jorgensen and Abdul Razak down in seventh and ninth respectively. I feel so good and uh, I didn't expect this before the race and uh, I start good, I start in third position and uh, Yosef and Marcus have some problem and uh, I want uh, the moto and uh, I want the, the weekend, I'm so happy and uh, it's a perfect weekend so we have to work more for the next race but uh, we are so happy and uh, 
will uh, appreciate this moment a lot. Thank you. As the UIM ADP flag is passed to Kuwait, that brings to an end a fantastic action-filled start to the 2021 UIM ADP season. See you in Kuwait City for round two of the UIM ADP Aquabike Class Pro World Championship. <laughs>